The lethal A-10 Warthog, a nuclear bomber. Despite what the Pentagon and senior Air Force leaders might say, the A-10 Warthog is far from a single-purpose airplane. But dropping nuclear bombs might be one of the things the low- and slow-flying attackers actually can't do. But the Air Force once briefly considered the idea. In December 1975, Secretary of Defense Bill Clements wanted to know how much it would cost to modify F-15 and F-16 fighter jets so they could carry atomic weapons. Two months later, the Air Force sent back data on what it would take to upgrade those two types of aircraft, or the A-10, with nukes. The flying branch's calculations included systems needed to support B-43, B-57, and B-61 bombs. At the time, these three bombs were the standard nuclear weapons for aircraft in the U.S. military. If a shooting war broke out in Europe, America's NATO allies would have gotten access to these weapons too. Newer versions of the B-61 remain in service today. Obviously, the Air Force never ended up arming the A-10s with nukes. But Clement's desire for more nuclear-armed aircraft is hardly surprising. During the Cold War, the Pentagon expected to use nuclear bombs, artillery shells, and missiles to fend off a Soviet invasion of Europe. While the Warthogs boast an impressive and unequaled array of ground attack capabilities, the straight-wing strike planes are poorly suited at best and a death trap at worst for a nuclear bombing run. This is a could versus should question, says a senior Air Force weapons and tactics planner who spoke to war is boring on the condition of anonymity. Certainly, the A-10 could have been modified for nuke delivery. The problem is that while the aircraft certainly could have delivered the bombs to their intended targets, the pilots probably couldn't make it back alive. The Warthog's slow speed, so valuable when supporting troops on the ground, could have easily turned the entire affair into a suicide mission. While the exact specifics are classified, a B-61 bomb can likely create a fireball almost a mile wide, according to data from nuclear historian Alex Wellerstein's Nuke Map website. The approximate radius of the air blast from the weapon going off, where most residential buildings collapse, injuries are universal, and fatalities are widespread, will extend more than three miles from ground zero, Wellerstein's site adds. Fast-moving fighter jets would have trouble escaping the aftermath of these massive explosions. On a nuclear mission, the Air Force expected its fighter pilots to fly toward their targets at altitudes greater than 30,000 feet before lobbing bombs at the enemy. With the bombs flying in an upward arc onto the target, the method would hopefully give the aircraft enough time to fly clear of the blast. But it'd still be a close call. The slower A-10s probably wouldn't make it. The fact that F-15 E-Strike Eagles and other fighters would have had difficulty aggressing the area after nuclear delivery indicates that any A-10 using nuclear weapons would not have survived. Lastly says, I just don't think any nuclear delivery profile would have been sufficient for an A-10. The A-10 pilots would have had to hope for the best, but weapons fitted with a timed fuse might have bought just enough time for the Warthogs to get away from the impact site. Needless to say, the Air Force didn't recommend strapping atomic weapons to the A-10s. Nor is there any record that the Air Force considered the idea ever again. I do not think I ever heard this capability discussed, the former A-10 pilot says. My guess is that we would have had a good laugh at the idea had it ever come up.